We like to think that being morally upright means treating every individual as an individual. But we all have blind spots that prevent that. Those blind spots are not just in us, but they are in the world. And Jesus is saying that his work involves confronting those strongholds of embedded prejudice and discrimination that dehumanize people, preventing them from being able to be judged by and thrive as individuals. And he is calling on the church to join him, which is something that we are all too reluctant to do. What are these strongholds? Well, you can pretty much start with anything that ends with a suffix like ism, archie, <laughs> right? or, or phobia, racism, patriarchy, xenophobia, say. When an adjective like black, woman, or immigrant becomes a noun, then people aren't being treated as unique children of God. They become a category or a class that limits their worth and potential. Bureaucracies are good at this. Anyone ever suffered an, an, an insurance company deny and delay strategy? Right? Try to work your way through that. Or anybody ever spent two hours on the phone with a so-called customer service center? being told what they cannot do for you rather than what they can do for you, these strongholds treat you like a commodity, not a person. But some strongholds are more deadly, though. This past weekend, we saw the commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre. At the same time, we learned that the Oklahoma legislature has passed a law that would make it nearly impossible to teach kids about that event as an example of systemic racism because to do so might make white children and their parents uncomfortable. The Black Tulsa community of Greenwood, which was known then as Black Wall Street, because blacks were doing then precisely what we even today say we want them to do in becoming self-reliant, in be being industrious, well, it was all burned and destroyed completely. As many as 300 were killed and 10,000 left homeless in what can only be called a domestic terrorist attack, which included the first example of aerial bombings from the planes of the Sinclair Oil Company. You can't talk about this without talking about the strongholds of segregation, Jim Crow laws, racist law enforcement, and media coverage, or the lack of it, that allowed it to happen and not to be talked about for a hundred years. To prevent talking about it as history today, is a further example of a stronghold. Now, here's the thing, church. We can't fix in the world what is still broken in us, right? The good news, though, is that Jesus is at work, still binding the strong man, even if he happens to be someone standing in a pulpit. Look at the difference in the church's response in Tulsa in a hundred years. The Sunday after the massacre in 1921, the bishop in Tulsa preached in the Boston Avenue Methodist Church and said this, the white man who got his gun and went out in defense with it did the only thing a decent man could have done. There is one thing upon which I want to make myself perfectly clear. That is racial equality. There never has been and never will be such a thing. Steps toward racial equality are the worst possible thing for the black man. 
Now here's what the current pastor of that same church said this past week. This never should have happened. It was the bad outcome of white supremacy that had infected the church. So today we are making a contrasting statement that we are a church that wants to work for integration, wants to work for building better race relations, and believes that all people are equal and should be treated equally under the law. Praise God. Spiritual strongholds still exist in our world today, friends, and they are where Satan hides in plain sight, right among us. But Jesus, I tell you, is the strongest man in the right sense of the word. He uses the strength of love to free and heal us all. And he will never rest until oppressed and oppressor alike, all the wounded and weary of the world, find their rest in him. Amen.